Okie dokie, now we are going to talk about the blood vessels and then blood pressure, get in right into it. Okay, so let's go to blood vessels first. Well, blood vessels form a closed circuit that carries blood away from the heart to the cells and then back again. I mean, the whole purpose of the heart is to bring deoxygenated blue blood to the heart, to the right side. The right side will pump it to the lungs. The lungs will take the out the carbon dioxide, fill it with oxygen, make it red blood, bring it to the left side of the heart, and pump it to the rest of the body. Well, what takes it to the rest of the body are the aorta, arteries, okay, and veins will return the blue blood back to the heart. In between the arteries and veins, we have smaller arteries known as arterioles. We have smaller veins called venules. And what connects the arterioles to the venules are capillaries. Okay, so we have capillaries. Now, arteries are strong, elastic vessels adapted for carrying blood pressure. So when we measure blood pressure, we always say we're measuring arterial blood pressure. So your 120 over 80 is measuring the pressure in your arteries. Arteries transport blood away from the heart. Arteries become smaller as they divide and give rise to arterioles. You do want to know the three layers of the artery and how it differs from the layers in the veins. The tunica interna is the innermost endothelial layer composed of simple squamous epithelium, creates a smooth surface to prevent clots, secretes biochemicals to prevent platelet aggregation, and secretes substances to regulate blood flow. The tunica media, here's the, the key difference between an artery and a vein. The tunica media is a thick mineral layer composed of smooth muscle. The tunica externa is the outermost connective tissue relatively thin, attaches the artery to the surrounding tissues. Now, <laughs> sympathetic impulses innervate the smooth muscle in the walls of the arteries and trails via vasomotor fibers. Sympathetic stimulation causes muscle contraction resulting in vasoconstriction of the arteries. Okay, so if you drink caffeine, right, caffeine is a sympathetic response. So what's going to do, what's going to happen to your blood vessel, it's going to constrict. So if you ever get a caffeine headache, right, uh, um, it can cause that because you're withdrawing from that caffeine, your blood vessel can throb, boom, boom, boom. So if you ever get a headache and you take Excedrin, if you look at the ingredient Excedrin, it says caffeine, which will cause vasoconstriction, and sometimes that can help. Okay, so when vasomotor impulses are inhibited, meaning they can't get across, vasodilation results. So this sympathetic control of arteries and arterioles is used to regulate blood flow and blood pressure. Larger arterioles have walls similar to those of arteries. They also consist of those three layers, externa, intima, and uh, tunica media. Walls of arterioles get thinner as they approach the capillaries. Small arterioles have only endothelium and a small number of muscle cells and a thin layer of connective tissue. Okay, so again, it gets arteries, then arterioles, then capillaries, then venules, then veins. At any one given time, most of the blood in your body is in the veins. 60% of your blood at one, any one time is in your veins. The lowest pressure, the lowest pressure is in veins. The highest pressure is in your arteries. Okay, so the lowest pressure is in your veins. At any, any given moment right now, most of your blood is in veins, 60%. So if you look at the difference, compare and contrast the artery to the vein, well, they all have the three layers, but if you look at the tunica media, look how thick the tunica media is in the artery, and then look how thin it is in the tunica media. The other uh, difference between the artery and vein is that veins have valves. Arteries do not have valves. So these valves, so you're pumping blood, boom, boom, and these valves prevent the backflow of blood. So if you've been standing and doing a 12-hour shift, sometimes these valves over the years can get faulty and weak. And so what happens, you get spider veins or varicose veins. Uh, so you can get that. And if you have a family history of that, you might want to wear compression stockings. Then that helps uh, keep that blood moving in the right direction. Or pumping your ankle if you're on a long flight to Singapore. Now, capillaries are the blood vessels with the smallest diameter. They connect small arterioles to small venules. 
They consist only of layer of endothelium through which substances are exchanged. So the capillaries are very thin so that you can get oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrition, waste products that go easily in and out, in and out of the capillaries. Capillary permeability varies from one tissue to the next due to the size of the openings between cells. Generally, capillary openings are larger in the kidneys, intestines, and endocrine glands, and smaller in muscle tissues. So if you look at the capillaries and you look at these little slits, right, so you can get exchange of substances through these slits. There's the capillary. Tissue fluid can go easily in and out. The pattern of capillary density also varies from one body part to the next. Areas of great metabolic activity, leg muscles, for example, have higher densities of capillaries. Some are found in highly branching networks, while others simply connect an arterial to a vein. The precapillary sphincters can regulate the amount of blood entering the capillary bed and are controlled by oxygen concentration in the area. If blood is needed elsewhere in the body, the capillary beds in less important areas receive less blood flow due to vasoconstriction and contraction of these precapillary sphincters. During exercise, the capillary beds and skeletal muscles are opened by vasodilation and relaxation of the precapillary sphincter. Just think of the sphincter just like it sounds. It can open and close and control the amount of blood that is entering. So here's the arterial, here's the venule, and here's the capillary in between. Now if you ever go to the doctor's office and somebody has high blood pressure, they'll say, oh, you should exercise. And you're like, okay, well, but how does that happen? Uh, physiologically, the whole reason that we want to patients to uh, exercise is obviously to cardiovascular health, but what does cardiovascular health mean? Well, if I put enough demand on my blood vessels, especially the arterioles, boom, boom, and a lot of blood is going, and I only have, let's say, four capillaries, well, the pressure is going to build up and it's going to increase. Hence, my blood pressure goes up. But if I start to consistently exercise and the brain says, you know what, there's a lot of pressure going here. I'm going to make a few more capillaries, boom, boom, boom 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 so now instead of four ways to exchange between the arterial and the venule i have eight well if i have more pathways well then my pressure is going to go down think of your classroom two doors right 100 students they need to get out of those two doors well what's going to happen is there's going to it's going to backlog and the pressure is going to increase through that door well if i just make two more doors and i have four doors it's easier for the students to go in and out hence if we have more capillaries via cardiovascular exercise our pressure is going to go down a constant exchange of respiratory gases, nutrients, and metabolic waste occurs between capillaries and tissue fluid near the body cells via diffusion, filtration, and osmosis. And you want to know uh, what those three things are. So blood entering capillaries contains high concentrations of oxygen and nutrients that diffuse from capillaries into tissues. So diffusion is a movement from high concentration to low concentration. Okay. Plasma proteins remain in the blood due to their large size. Carbon dioxide metabolic waste diffused from the tissue fluid into the capillaries because we want to get rid of the carbon dioxide. Direction of diffusion depends on the concentration gradients. Again, high concentration to low concentration. Hydrostatic pressure from the pumping action of the heart generates force for filtration of substances through the wall. So filtration means substances are moving through the wall, right? Push, they're being pushed through. And osmosis is just movement of water from high concentration to low concentration. So again, diffusion is movement of molecules from high concentration to low concentration. Filtration is we're pushing substances through a wall. That's called filtration. It's being filtered. And osmosis is high concentration to low concentration movement of water. Venules leading from capillaries merge to form large veins that return blood to the heart. Walls of veins have the same three layers as arteries, except that the musk layer is very thin and they have flap-like valves to prevent backflow of blood. The lumen of the vein is larger than that of an artery. Blood pressure in the vein is lower than that of an artery, so the lowest blood pressure is going to be in the veins. Veins also function as blood reservoirs. Vasoconstriction of veins in times of blood loss can almost restore normal blood pressure after 25% of blood being lost due to hemorrhage. Okay, so they have blood reservoirs. 
Blood pressure moves blood through the lumen of the arteries and arterioles. Blood pressure decreases with distance from the heart. So your blood pressure is going to be, if I were to measure it, let's say at my wrist versus here, it's going to be the further away I go from the heart, it's going to be uh, uh, different. So sometimes um, if they use those wrist cuffs, they're not as accurate as if you were to use the blood pressure cuff at your arm here. So blood pressure is greatest in arteries, lower in arterioles, and even lower in capillaries and lowest in veins. Blood pressure is higher in arterial end of the capillaries than in the venular end. Hydrostatic pressure, blood pressure, drives the filtration of fluids and very small molecules out of the capillary at the arterial end, but diffusion occurs all along the capillary. And colloid osmotic pressure is generated by the presence of plasma proteins that remain in the blood and draw water into the capillary. So what's happening is these proteins that are too large to filter in and out of the capillaries will stay there and it'll draw um, water into it depending on um, the concentration. This becomes more important at the venular end of capillaries where some of the fluid has been diffused out. Hydrostatic pressure and colloid osmotic pressure are opposing forces. So at the arterial end of capillaries, blood pressure is higher than colloid osmotic pressure, so filtration occurs to a greater extent. At the venular end of capillaries, colloid osmotic pressure exceeds blood pressure, so reabsorption occurs to a greater extent. More fluid leaves capillaries by filtration than returns by osmosis. The excess fluid is picked up by the lymphatic vessels and returned via to the circulation. So if you look at this uh, uh, image here, so here's the ar arterial, here's the venule. So this is the arterial end of the capillary, and here's the venule end of the of the capillary. Okay. So if you look at outward force of hydro hydrostatic pressure, it's about 35 milligrams of mercury. Okay. The inward force of the osmotic pressure is 24. Well, if you look at the difference between 35 and 24, well high concentration to low concentration. So what's going to happen is we're going to push the net outward pressure of 11. But if you look at the venule end, you have an outward force of hydrostatic pressure is 16. The inward force of osmotic pressure is 24. So what's happening is we're going to go from high concentration to low concentration. So we're going to have a net uh, movement inside and here we're going to have a net movement outside. Here's that lymphatic vessel. If you have excess fluid, the job of the lymphatic capillary is to pick up that excess fluid. If you ever sprain your ankle and you have an injury to this area, well all this fluid seeps out and sometimes the lymphatic capillary uh, can't pick all of it, all of that up, then what can happen is you get a swollen ankle, swollen knee, the best thing to do is, if you have pain, then is to ice it. But once the pain goes away, then it's almost best to do exercise and movement so that pumping action will get rid of that excess fluid. But sometimes the pain will limit if we can move the ankle. But again, once your pain goes away, start moving as much as just possible, and the swelling will gradually go away. If you look at underneath the microscope of arterial versus vein, you can see the size, right? So here's the artery and here's the vein, venule versus arterial. So let's review what happens at the arterial end. The arterial end of capillaries is the end closest of the, to the arterioles, small arteries that supply blood to the capillaries. At the arterial end, blood pressure is higher due to the force exerted by the heart, and this pressure pushes blood and its contents into the capillary. So, oxygen and nutrients such as glucose are transported in the bloodstream because we saw that net pressure was different. These substances pass from the capillaries into the surrounding tissue through a process called diffusion, high concentration to low concentration. Oxygen and nutrients move from an area of high concentration in the blood to an area of low concentration in the tissues. This is because cells in the tissue consume oxygen and nutrients, leading to a lower concentration. Right. So what's happening is we're pushing the oxygen and nutrients into the tissues, but they're feeding off of it. So obviously the supply is going to go down. So then when they keep coming through the blood, uh, 
the blood vessels, well, since there's always a lower amount and we want to go from high concentration, low concentration, that's why oxygen and nutrition will always go from the arterial end of the blood uh, into the tissues. Now, in addition to oxygen and nutrients, some small molecules and waste products also move out of the capillaries at the arterial end through diffusion. Carbon dioxide, a waste product of metabolism, moves from the tissue cells into the capillaries for transport back into uh, the lungs. And remember, if I have a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in my tissues and none in my blood, well, high concentration to low concentration, so I'm going to pick up that carbon dioxide, return it to the heart, return it to the lungs so they can oxygenate it. On the venous end of the capillaries, closer to the venules, small veins that collect blood from the capillaries. At the venous end, the blood pressure is lower due to the loss of fluid plasma from the bloodstream as it moves through the capillaries. This loss of fluid is mainly due to a process called filtration. Filtration is the movement of water and small solutes such as ions, think of ions such as potassium, calcium, sodium, from the capillaries into the surrounding tissues. It is driven by pressure difference between the blood and tissue fluid this helps to supply tissues with nutrients and oxygen while also allowing the removal of waste products. At the venous end, reabsorption occurs to return some of the fluid and solutes back into the capillaries. This process is driven by colloid osmotic pressure created by proteins. Remember, those proteins attract the water, which tend to draw fluid back into the capillaries. And if you look at the, the muscle contraction here, as you contract, it pushes blood through the veins, and these valves are one-way valves, so it prevents backflow. All right, so if we look at the characteristics of blood vessels, uh, again, artery, arterial, capillary, venule, and vein. Artery is a thick, strong wall with three layers. The job of the artery is to transport blood under relatively high pressure. Your blood pressure at 120 over 80 is arterial blood pressure. Arteriole is a thinner wall than the artery, connects an artery to a capillary, helps control blood flow into a capillary by contracting or dilating. Capillaries are a single layer of squamous. This is very important. Capillaries allow nutrients, gases, and waste to be exchanged between the blood and tissues. A venule connects a capillary to a vein, and veins transport blood under relatively low pressure from the venule to the heart, and valves prevent backflow of the blood. Okay, they also serve as a blood reservoir in case of an injury. It can stabilize the blood and blood pressure depending on how much blood is lost. Okay. All right.